Favorite us, tweet us, friend us, love us, all at SaskMiles.com. Under great pressure, I have uh, put the Minion glasses on that are in the studio here because we're live on uh, Facebook. You can go to my account, which is uh, Nick J. Miles, N-I-K-J-M-I-L-E-S. And uh, we are up to 18 viewers here on Facebook. Uh, you now can see me in Minion glasses. No, or I, I can't do this. No, that's I can't. 187 viewers. What? Yeah, you got the wrong glasses. Oh, okay. 187 viewers. <laughs> that's why I don't wear them, guys. <laughs> Look, there you go. Uh, keep, keeping you connected to the automotive world, you're listening to Tess Miles, America's Automotive Radio <coughs> Show. We'd like to thank you for being part of the automotive nation. For more fun facts about cars, find us on uh, Twitter at Test Miles. Thank you, Nick. In 2015 statistics, there were 9.2 million motorcycle owners. 14% of them are women. The average age for a female rider is 39, and men are 48. Oh, good. I'm I'm somewhere around the average age of a motorcycle ride. All right, Brad, what have you been driving this week? So I had the new Honda Fit, which I liken to the guy you want your daughter to marry, all in deference here. <laughs> um, but it's you can have to explain that now because oh I'm yeah, confused. Bob's daughter just got <laughs> married last night, so <laughs> uh, it's practical, it's affordable, you know, it's comfortable. It's it's really the the vehicle, if you don't demand sexy, exciting. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good no, thing. No, it's okay. It? <laughs> but it's, it really does what it's supposed to do. It still, it leads that subcompact group head and shoulders, I think, uh, above all sorts of things like the Sonic, the Fiesta, the Mazda 2. Maybe the Rio, I like driving that vehicle. There's two things about this car that I think are outstanding. One is you can tow it behind a motorhome. Right, in the manual version. Number two is it has magic seats. Anything with magic in it, I really <laughs> like. But magic seats that you can you can fold those seats in any which way but loose, and you can get almost anything in. It's perfect for the dogs. I, I put my uh, chocolate lab Sam in the back. He's 11 months old. You can fold those seats up. And uh, he doesn't have to jump on them. It's it's great. I thought you, you meant magic seats because my big frame actually fit into the driver's seat. <laughs> All pretty right, could be that too. Could be that too. Because I was I was actually quite surprised how big that car is. It leads the category in interior space, and the 1.5 liter four cylinder engine is okay. And again, it's it's practical. It gets up to 38 miles to the gallon with the CVT, and. Its price point starts at fifteen thousand five twenty five, can go up to about twenty thousand, but it's it really leads that subcompact group for me. It's great value car. And uh, fuel, what was the fuel economy on it? Uh, the manual, actually, again, as we've talked about, gets worse mileage. Twenty nine in the city, thirty seven highway, thirty two overall. With the CVT, it gets up to thirty eight on the highway and thirty five overall. And I think the Honda, I think Honda actually hit it out of the park, and I'm hoping this year they'll have a electric version of that. Because um, they got rid of the electric version from last one, so we're we're holding our breath from that. All right, Beaverton motorcycle is probably uh, something you cannot have missed if you drive down 217. It takes up uh, a large portion of 217. You can see all the motorcycles on display, and uh, the man in charge of that is Bob Lanfear Jr., nominated in 2012 for uh, Time Magazine's Dealer of the Year. Uh, even today, he has uh, lots and lots of attributes. He does racing. He has the best motorcycle collection I have ever seen outside of a museum in my life. He took me for a tour around the store and pointed out his dad's first bike, his first bike, some BSAs, even some Triumphs that I had never seen before. Um, he has a Honda, Suzuki, a Yamaha, and Kawasaki, and I'm very honored to have uh, Bob Lamphere Jr. in the studio with us today. Uh, boy, motorcycle season is on us, Bob, so we need to get these bikes ready to get back on the road. How do we need to prep them? Well, you know, it's interesting. If you've had a bike and you've stored it all winter long, it's important that you start it, stored the bike in the beginning, at the end of the season, with ethanol-free fuel in it. If you're going to store a bike at any time, the ethanol, the ethanol actually tears apart the carburetors inside, and it's it's really, they say it's not bad for the carburetors, but it really is. We see it time and time again. The ethanol-free fuel is the best fuel to put in your chainsaws, your your mowers, and it's going to sit for more than 30 days at a time through the winter, should have ethanol-free fuel in it. So, so it, it eats, the ethanol eats away the, uh, the aluminum in the, in the, in the carburetor? Actually, it, breaks, it breaks down really fast, 
and separates, and then the ethanol itself actually corrodes the jets and the aluminum and starts etching away at it. And so your bike doesn't doesn't perform that well. Doesn't perform, and you should always put your bike on a battery tender every time you store it. The battery tenders are a cheap investment. The batteries are upwards of a hundred dollars a piece, and we've had batteries last up to five and six years, year after year, on the same battery with a battery tender, and they. They're, they're really, really a nice rig. I actually had my bike service just before the winter, so when I went out to start it this time, and I, I didn't know about the battery tender, it did actually uh, turn over the first time. Didn't start. I had to do a little bit of a run and push to get it to start, but uh, just probably to get that because there was probably too much ethanol in it. So where do we buy the ethanol-free free fuel? There's quite a few stations around town. You can Google it, but there's a Texaco station on McLaughlin Boulevard that sells it, and there's a little tiny store, a uh, Laurel View store, out in Hillsboro that sells it right down the street from my house. All right, so if let's just say you need to get your bike tuned up, uh, is this something you, know, something you do yourself, or do we bring it into uh, Beaver and Motorcycles to have them look at it? The main thing is the surface charge on the battery. If your plates on your um, battery get sulfated, it'll continually drain the battery, and they actually don't have the connect connectivity. So that's why the battery tender is so starting. So when they start going dead, they start sulfating right away. And then once the sulfating process starts, you can't re reverse it. So you should always have your bike on a battery tender when you're not using it because it really saves the battery. And it saves the, you know, you having to go out and buy a new battery every spring when you go out and your bike goes. Err. <laughs> and that's how that happened to me at the end of last year. Ready but to go ride. Say that again, Brad. Day, and then you get out there and you got to deal with the battery and yeah. all that hassle. It's, yeah, what, by the time you've got your gloves and your helmet on, you sit on the bike, you go, <laughs> wah, 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 so you're ready, ready to do that. All right, so uh, let's talk about uh, Beaverton Motorcycle. How long have you guys had Beaverton Motorcycle? Because some of the bikes you have in there are uh, older than, um, even older than Brad, I dare to say. <laughs> well, we celebrated a few years ago our 50th year. We started in 1964. And I was just a little tight because I was born in 57. And uh, we started out a little tiny motorcycle dealership on Hall Boulevard in Beaverton, downtown Beaverton. And uh, we grew to the Honda cars in 70. And uh, we never looked back. It's been a wonderful ride. We love motorcycling. Matter of fact, our passion is motorcycle riding. And the cars just help us do that. Uh, one of the things, and we'll talk a little bit more about buying bikes too, but uh, one of the things that I really loved about your store, a apart from the fact that from your receptionist through everybody I met in the store and was absolutely friendly and welcoming, is the fact that you guys got it. Like when I said something about a bike, uh, this is what I feel comfortable on, this is what I don't feel comfortable on. Your, uh, I can't remember the name of the guy that walked around with us when, when you and I walked around the store. But he immediately picked out two or three because I, I had a bike in mind. Oh, I really like this, and and he said, "No, the center of gravity is way too high for you. You need to sit on this." And he was right the first time because the minute I sat on the bike, my feet touched the ground. I could feel I could actually control the bike. So the knowledge of your staff—I mean, you've probably built these guys up over years, right? That was Jerry Lenz, my brother-in-law, who's buried my sister Sharon. He's been running the motorcycle store for years, and Dave Newell, the manager there, and they really know their product knowledge. And, you know, when, when someone is in, in seam challenged as you and he are, because right. you both have short legs, right. and you Kyle. know right away if the top end's too heavy, if the seat height's too low or it's too high, you, you get that tipping point and you start to tip over and it's never comfortable, no. especially if you're a new rider. You're a year, a year and a half no, riding. No, I'm not, not even a full year. Yeah. You so. know, you talked about helmets and gloves a little earlier too, which is kind of neat. You want your helmet to fit tight when it's new. Right. And you want your gloves to fit loose so your hands don't go to sleep on the bar. And the biggest problem people have is they don't relax. Right. They tight, they handle the grips on their bike too hot, too heavy, and they get arm pump. Right. It causes their hands to go to sleep. And with tight gloves, it, it, it is, uh, makes uh, it excels worse. that. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? Um, and I'm glad I do get, I do have loose gloves. One of the things that Jeff Earls taught me uh, when we were riding the bike is, you know, you can ride the clutch, but you can't ride the brake. And so every time I would, would be riding the brake, he'd be doing this, hands off, hands off the brake, hands off the brake. Because, you know, once you start to get that grip going, with a clutch, you're basically doing it oh, the whole time. But if you do it with the brake, you know, your hands kind of go to sleep and they kind of seize up. An easy way to do it is just to put a couple fingers on the lever itself so you can't grab so tight. Because once you get arm pump in right. your arms, it doesn't go away for a few hours. <laughs> it's very, very uncomfortable. 
<laughs> so the motorcycle guys with giant forearms riding these motorcycles too. Uh, it's a, you, you really ride a lot, don't you? I mean, I, I'm thinking you, you've got Honda store, you've got a Kia store, you've got an Infinity store, but the fact is that it seems like your heart is definitely, uh, a lot of your heart is in the motorcycle store. Our family passion is motorcycling, and it's very, very fun for our family. I've got grandkids that all ride. We take them to Sand Lake and ride on the dunes. It's a lot of fun. I have a dual sport bike. I don't get out as often as I want, and I ride on the street. I, I like street riding, but I'm very ca- cautious when I'm riding on the street, and I always tell people, look at the people turning his left's eyes to make yeah. sure you have got contact that they see you and you see them. If not, you start, guys, start slowing down. All right, we're going to talk. Uh, we're going to take a little break. When we come back, we're going to talk about the best deal that you have today at Beaverton Motorcycle. We're also going to talk about some of the bikes that you recommend that people take a look at this season and... We'll talk about the bike that you're dangling in front of my face, which is absolutely fantastic. And I'm having a really hard time with, you know, with trying, trying to justify me going out and buying a new bike before I've had my first year. Our guest is Bob Lamphere Jr. from Be- Beaverton Motorcycles. Uh, we will be back talking more about spring riding on two wheels. I'm Nick.